my name's Phil McLean and I was born in Mount Mount Alpha, the suburb of Melbourne at a very young age. My name is Michelle Kelly and I was born in Melbourne. Cats or dogs, I like dogs. Cats are alright, but dogs are only... Cats or dogs? Um, both. I can't really say that I like one or the other because I have both cats and I have dogs, although saying that my last cat um, thought she was a dog, so... <laughs> what car did I learn to drive in? 1939 Studio Baker, first lesson when I was 10. I learned to drive in a Holden Astra, but my first car that I owned was a Tirana. What mum used to say was, Philip, will you sit still and be quiet? <laughs> the one thing that my mum, my mum and dad always told me was to be yourself. Don't let anybody try and get you to be someone that you're not. Nickname is yes. The main one I've had is Joe. I've had a few others, but Joe sounds the best one for the film. <laughs> Why was it Joe? Well, I had three brothers and we all worked together as builders and we, we all called each other Joe, so that's what it was. Well, my nickname was my surname, which was my maiden name, and it was Rob. Although, <laughs> although then one of the guys that I used to go to church with, like in our youth group, thought that that was too mas masculine, so he changed it to Mitchie. <laughs> Great. I do put me well in the same spot at home, yes. No, I can never find it. <laughs> we would my dream of to the house be probably on about a thousand acres somewhere, miles from anywhere. Yeah, that'd do me. My dream retirement house is on our property that we've got over in South Australia if we can ever get back there. So I may be retired before we ever get back there, but <laughs> it's in, um, in a little place called Port McDonald. How yeah, often do I change the batteries in the smoke detector? Never, because I'm the shortest in my household. When it starts beeping at me and says it's time to change it. My favourite colour is red. Blue, your favourite colour is blue. Shopping for clothes for three hours for me is a nightmare. I hate shopping. Shopping for clothes for three hours for me would be torture. The best piece of advice I've ever been given. In all the ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And I think that's probably the best piece of advice I can give to anybody. I would say that's probably the best piece of advice I've ever had. Because that's a scripture that has stuck with me since, as I say, about 10 or 11 years of age. That again would have to be just to be myself. My first job was as a paper boy. My first job was working at Target as a checkout chick. I came to know Christ when I was 10 in a tent mission in, up by in the Dandenongs, which you know quite well. I came to know Christ as a real little youngie, as, like really, really young. My, I was christened in the Church of England, but my family, I was always raised that God was God, Jesus was his son, and that if ever there was anything, you know, to always go to him. At a John Ridley mission, and you wouldn't know of John Ridley probably, um, but my family were all, all musicians and they were asked to come and be the musical items at the mission so we moved down from Hamilton to Upway. We weren't born again, we weren't Catholic, we weren't any religion at all but that's just how I was raised. And um, that's when I came to know the Lord, when I was, as I said when I was 10. My cousin came over from Tassie for a holiday and told me about Jesus and led me through this prayer and I was about 8 at the time, didn't really know what it, you know what it was but I thought well if it means I can get closer to God because I know who he is I will. My mate put his hand up and I saw him put his hand up and I thought well, I might as well do the same so. And then when I was 14 my uncle and auntie moved back from Tassie and her dad was a pastor and he, they picked him up from the airport and called him to our place on the way home and he was talking to mum in the kitchen about it. We were still in our pyjamas because it was early in the morning and he led mum through the sinner's prayer and I just walked up to him and said I want some of that too and so he prayed with me and, and I said the sinner's prayer and, and almost immediately was baptised in the Holy Spirit as well. I just started talking in tongues and didn't know what, what that was and then he explained it to me afterwards. But um, that, was, that was a good moment. Yeah, so that's when I, so my relationship built over that time but even at 14 I knew that what I was that I wanted to get closer to God and so, yeah, and I've been there ever since. I think the difference that Jesus has made in my life really is probably at my age now as I look back. The difference Jesus has made in my life is 
particularly growing up knowing who he was, but it wasn't until I really accepted him as my saviour that that relationship changed and my, my life changed. I didn't have the problems that the other kids at school had. Getting up of a morning and knowing that really, when I stop and think about it, that he's got my day planned. I knew I was different, I knew my life was different. Um, I didn't have all those um, issues with trying to fit in with everybody and it was got back to that being told to be myself. You know, like I was who I am and God loved me for who I was. And I can trust him to take me through that day. So therefore, I was his and, and, I, and you know, like people would say bad things and that sort of thing and it was like, well no, you're not saying them about me, it's the God in, like Jesus in me that you're saying it about, so it's him you've got to deal with, not me. And, and I'm still like that today. If people want to talk about me or, or do bad things and that sort of thing, it's like, yeah, whatever. I know that he's there. I know that he's watching over us. And as I read the scriptures as I get older and see that he really does love us so much. Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that he's the biggest thing that he did in my life. And 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 you know, kids, that, girls that I've gone to school with that I've still kept in touch with, um, they still see that they still say to me, "I don't know how you do it." And I say, "Well, I do." <laughs> and that uh, reading the scriptures just recently. Uh, understanding again that Jesus presents us before his Father with exceeding joy. It's because God's the one that gives me the strength to go through and do all that sort of thing. And yeah, I still get upset about some things, but I know that, you know, if it's something really bad, I know it's not me that it's being focused at, it's who's in me, because they want what I've got, but they just won't take that step to get it. And uh, that's why he went to the cross, obviously, as it says, he, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. And uh, I look at that scripture and I think, yeah, well, that was part of the joy that uh, he was looking forward to, being able to bring his children home because of what he had done on the cross.